Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ambassador, I have three questions. Um, I'm going to try to condense them and be as brief as I can, but I think they're all important. You've been mentioning Haiti a lot, so let me just say that temporary protected status for Haitians living in the United States expires on January 22, 2018. If President Trump does not extend TPS, 50,000 Haitian Americans would be sent back to the poorest country in the hemisphere, which is still suffering from the effects of not only the 2010 earthquake, but also Hurricane Matthew and the ongoing cholera epidemic. I'd like to insert into the record a letter from the New York delegation to Secretaries Tillerson and Kelly on this topic that was sent on May 5th of this year. I was one of the people who signed, as was Mr. Espiat and uh, other members of the delegation, so I'd like to enter that into the record. And uh, given the country's food insecurity crisis and massive homelessness, how well prepared is Haiti to absorb this population? And if these individuals are forced to return to Haiti, what would be the implications for migration flows to the Dominican Republic and other countries in the hemisphere? And finally, we know that 15 percent of Haiti's GDP is made up of remittances from the United States. If we end TPS at the same time when we're cutting foreign assistance to Haiti, what could the impact of this dual blow be? Let me see if you can answer some of those. And if not, you can put something in writing that we could do at a later date. Sure. I, I'm happy to, to talk a little bit to that. Um, as I think you know, um, uh, DHS Secretary Kelly made a decision um, in either late May or early June of this year to extend uh, the benefits of TPS for the Haitian uh, TPS beneficiaries for six months. Uh, at the end of that period, so sort of in November of this year, uh, he will look again at uh, the situation and make another determination as to, as to how DHS will act. Uh, in the interim, uh, we will be asked, we, the State Department, will be asked and the Embassy will be asked to uh, provide a country conditions report to, uh, to, uh, to DHS. Uh, I don't want to prejudge the outcome of, of the report that, that they're going to generate. They're going to look at facts on the ground and, and uh, submit that, and, and that will be part, that will be our submission effectively uh, to, uh, to DHS. Um, I understand. Uh, I, I understand your your concerns, and we've we're certainly very aware of uh, the the delegation's concerns about TPS. We, in my discussions with uh, the Haitian diaspora community, it is a subject that comes up with with great regularity. So I'm I'm most familiar with the concerns. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I've been pushing for for a long time. Uh, and I continue to be shocked that the United States still has no diplomatic presence in five key countries in the Eastern Caribbean, St. Lucia, Antigua, and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, Domin Dominica, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Venezuela and Cuba have embassies on all five of these islands, while the United States does not have a single diplomat in place. I was pleased that the State Department's new strategy acknowledged this fact, but now we need a plan to move forward in establishing a diplomatic presence. These, of course, don't have to be costly, multi-million dollar embassy compounds, but can be smaller offices, smaller diplomatic posts. So what is the impact of our diplomatic absence in these countries, particularly when countries that are not so friendly to us are there? What are the State Department's plans in the short and long term to expand our presence in the Eastern Caribbean? Thanks for the question. I, I think, you know, in, in, the, in the immediate term, um, I don't think there is going to be funding available to open uh, new diplomatic facilities. What we are looking at is ways at which we can, um, internally we're looking at ways at which we can uh, bring, do a better job of bringing some of those diplomatic services to those countries currently. As I think you know, they're all um, handled out of Bridgetown, Barbados. Uh, so we are looking at our processes and seeing what we can do. Uh, currently, these countries are served by our ambassador to Bridgetown Barbados, who is accredited to all those countries and who makes regular visit visits to, to them and members from the embassy country team. Um, and we are going to be looking at ways in which, which they can continue to uh, improve their outreach. But should, should funding become available, certainly we will be working with our uh, OBO, Official Buildings Office, I believe is what it's called, in the, within the State Department to see what will be within the realm of the possible. Let me, let me just say, I, I, I appreciate your answer, but let me just say that, that I think some special funding should be found for this uh, because it would go a long way. 
And it's crazy, well, while Cuba and Venezuela are there, and China is there, the United States, which is so close, is not. And then finally, very uh, quickly, I want to raise the issue about LGBT Americans who travel to the islands of the Caribbean. Um, they are, there are, is a lot of anti-LGBT climates in many of these countries with laws and uh, that are really uh, arcane. Um, has the State Department implemented any strategic dialogue with countries of the region on the need to temper some of these climates with a view to supporting the tourism that's so important to their economy? And uh, if, if not, can you please commit to doing so? Uh, thanks for the question. I, I think, you know, we have been active, the State Department has been active on this issue uh, in the past. Um, I think uh, there are certain cases where uh, we've continued to talk to people quietly. I think it is a situation where you need to judge each country differently and uh, judge what is going to be the most effective way to ensure that uh, you approach uh, a government to get the desired output, which is uh, non-discrimination and em embracing uh, all people. So we're, we, we continue on that, on that path. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You've been very generous with the time. Thank you. Thank you.